Hey guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show 331. This week we have Justin Plummer back on the show on the eve of him becoming a TV superstar on the Sci-Fi Channel. We talk about IWC Proving Grounds, some wrestlers being dicks, Virgil, not related, and so much more. We're on fire tonight, guys! Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 331. I am your host, Sorgatron, and uh, this is the Proving Ground of the Internet, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. With me around the horn on the couch, as usual, is Mr. Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com at Chachi Says. How you doing today? I am doing fan-fucking-tastic, sir. Whoa! How are you? I'm good. I'm good, good, sir. I'm good, sir. Good weekend of wrestling. It was a good weekend of wrestling. Yes, yeah, so we'll get more into that with IWC Proving Ground here in a little bit. But also with us from the uh, Secret Asylum in the north side of Pittsburgh, DJ Lunchbox. What's up, guys? It is uh, DJ Lunchbox. I'm here from the other side of Pittsburgh, and I would like to have a frank discussion about our buttholes. Mm-hmm. Let's. <laughs> I got some things to text to you. And also coming from Corpus Christi, <laughs> Texas... <laughs> For now. Are you gonna text me pictures? Uh, no, 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 no. I, is that um, what you implied right there? I don't know. What's the what's the what's the letter for splat? <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Wrestle fan a- from Corpus Christi, Texas. How you doing? I am good, and I am back on the Wrestling Mayhem show. Yes, the suspension is over. So oh, man, someone needs, fuck. Someone <laughs> needs to feed me a ginger so I can ace crush him, and then everything will be good again. And I'll be back on the Wrestling Mayhem show. A cookie or a young lady? No, a, well, a young man. Oh, what? What? Uh, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, oh. That's I mean, weird. I mean, the reference. Congratulations. My, my intro was really weird. Yours took a, a hard Wait, left. no, hard stop. Left. Stop. We are not Chick-fil-A. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let, let's take a moment and acknowledge the fact that WrestleFan Yo. chose us that's right. to come out to. That's right. You're right. Oh. We we are neither uh, against gay marriage nor have delicious delicious chicken. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, WrestleFan, chicken. That, that I, really I appreciate good. the fact that you chose us to come out to, and we are here for you, sir. Well, well thank you, Chachi, but I'd also like to note that it was just a reference to Heath Slater. And the fact that Randy Orton returned on Raw. Oh! Not, not okay. Let's so move sad. on with the don't, show. You don't have to backpedal. It's okay. Yeah, that's and not also what you said. with us, joining us, uh, uh, TV megastar. Uh, you can follow him at Plumber Loves You, we think. Justin Plumber from IWC <laughs> joining us and the Sci Fi Channel. This is my last night as a regular human being. After tomorrow night at 10 p.m. on the Sci Fi Channel, I'm going to be a mega celebrity. And uh, I just want to say it's better to come out to Chachi than to come on him. I would at least think so. Whoa! 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 I agree completely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. This is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We'll, get, we'll, we'll talk about most of those things. Um, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can catch us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com if we haven't scared you away. You can also, uh, if you've stumbled upon this, we can find this on uh, iTunes, uh, Blue TV, Roku, uh, under the Blue TV app, Stitcher, and a whole bunch of other outlets. Just look up Wrestling Mayhem Show and you'll find, you'll probably still find our MySpace. Holy hell. Um, also, you can drop us a line at our email. Good times. Good times. Uh, where's a falsetto this week, man? Good, uh, times. good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, and I just learned from uh, Jeho- Jehovah that this is the special Pat Patterson edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, you can also drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0, where we can hear your voicey voice and uh, hear your things you want to say. You also, oh, pick up the voice. app. At W, it's WMS Gold Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. It has links, it has extras, it has a bunch of stuff that is interesting that we don't always fit on the show. Us preparing, us mentally preparing for the show and having some side conversations. Uh, you can pick that up in your iOS store for iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, or also on this the Amazon. This week we talk about pig sex. Just pig, throwing it out pig there. Pig sex. That, that may... Not is it a selling a false, point? A false, it is. A false uh, advertisement. Um, I know you guys found my sex tape, but if we're going to do that, we might as well yeah, do it here. Yeah, I didn't tell you what kind of, I didn't tell you what kind of interview this is going to be. 
And you can God, also we're bring- learning about each and every one of us sexually. This is intense. That's, this is going to be a good is, show. It is. Interview. Well, I thought it was just Also, here. hey, yeah, that's also on the Amazon App Store, and you can join us here live if you really want to at live.sogatronmedia.com. Round about 8.30 p.m. Eastern or so. Or so. Or so. Or so. We do or have a lot not. of great other stuff coming on. Before us, a lot of time runs late. We're talking about video games, talking about uh, technology over there. Uh, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, if you want to join time us out. the entire night. Time out? Time You're out. You're calling a timer? I am I am calling a time out. Okay. I am challenging uh, you calling Justin Plummer being on the show an interview. Hmm. Okay. At, mm-hmm. at this point... What? I said at this point... <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorg is not interested. <laughs> at this point... <laughs> Sorg, we're supposed to eat on the gold app. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed it up. At this point, he is just another regular guest. <laughs> <laughs> That's, true. That's I, true. I'm not complaining. I'm just correcting you. This and, he has a, and he has a nicer backdrop than most of us too. Exactly. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh my god! You know that took like three minutes to do. <laughs> three minutes, I'll never get back. <laughs> exactly. Well, we're about to do about an hour and a half that you're never going to get back. And you might want your money back for. Um, all right, let's get right into it. Talking to the fans uh, that have been hitting us up all week. Uh, first, let's hit the email. Does anybody want to read this first one? We have email. Do we have dibs? I don't know. It's new which, people, so nobody gets one? dibs. Uh, we got I'll one. Take dibs. What is it? All right, Phil Claycomb. Phil Claycomb. Oh, Let me find it. I'm bringing it. Oh up. wait, I'm, what? What? Is click this on the, the wrong one email. No. No. But we're uh, waiting after the email. Okay. Yes. I have an update. On our, uh, how do you say, haters? Oh, really? I do. <laughs> okay, oh. okay, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. DJ Lunchbox, hit us with those sweet sounds. Okay. Uh, the title of the email is, Great Show, I Think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and he you? Launches, launches right into it. I enjoy 90% of the show. <laughs> Woo! Uh-oh. I'm from Illinois, not North Carolina, but fuck it. I think the TNA really had great thing going after Destination X. I would like to see more X Division guys and less Sting and Hogan. Balls deep, brother. I enjoy a double as the champ, Zima Ion, is the X Division champ. Devon will lose soon, and Daniels and Lax, LAX. Wait, really? Yep. Doesn't matter. Are great tag champs, but they never defend the titles, it seems like. Yeah. Bottom line, I think TNA has a lot of good going right now with Joseph Park slash Abyss Angle with Bully Ray and the Aces and Eights. Seems like Jarrett's bring in Luke Gallows, Chris Masters, Mike Knox, maybe Snitsky or someone like that. Time will tell. Looking forward to Chavo Guerrero on Impact. Hope they use him well. Chachi, or whatever, get over tout already. Fucking nobody wants to see you face. Do please don't tout, I guess. He is not committed to that. Remember when <laughs> WrestleFan was gone and, quote, phoning it in. Thanks for showing up, WrestleFan, or is non-wrestling fan. So show up this week. Why don't you? Wow. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That, this what is, do you I love this. Thank, thank you? <laughs> what do you think is best tag team ever in the opinion of the Wrestling and Mayhem Show crew? Thanks. Best At Big team. PPC Phil. Sent from my iPhone. Wait, hold on. I, I, Phil. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot in this email. <laughs> uh, Phil, uh, thanks for the email. Um, glad that you decided to contribute finally um <laughs> what 10 percent of the show don't you like yeah, i'm not clear on that i'm not really clear on that <laughs> I, 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 maybe we'll fix it that, uh, so send us an email next week no, we're not gonna fix everything we're not gonna be perfect Shut up. i willingly accept 90 percent of an okay show <laughs> that, he likes, <laughs> likes great, he, that is, he a, said that is, is. A, that is i kind of want to read it in like a broken russian accent like oh oh you make great show i think uh, remember when WrestleFan was gone and quote, phoning it in. Thanks for showing up, WrestleFan, or is non wrestling fan, so show up this week, why don't ya? <laughs> <laughs> why don't ya? No, seriously, I wanna know it's what fitting. I wanna know what ten percent 
Uh, it's just something I'm curious about. We just are the, we are the ten percent. We'll start a new campaign. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, well, let's go around the horn on his question there. Um, uh, what what do you think is the best tag team? Uh, let's go, uh, DJ Lunchbox. Oh yeah, uh, best best tag team ever. Um, ooh, that's tough. I I would have to say anytime uh, Rob Van Dam and uh, fucking Sabu. Sabu teamed up. Yeah, I always oh, yeah? enjoyed that. All right, all right. Why well, you, Russ Ben? Uh, I'll go back to I'll go to the ECW wheel, and it's not just from their time in ECW, but I was always a fan of the Dudley Boys, no matter what I mean you could say about them separately. Uh, I thought they had a dynamic that was really interesting, and they worked well as a team. Uh, honestly, they worked better as a team than they would, you know, in their singles careers. Um, so I would say them. Plumber. Hmm. Man, you guys stole both my answers. Uh, so I guess in a, in a very close third, I'm going with Air Boom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I can live with that. Dachi? I, I, have, I have two. Okay. Um, I'm, it's the Legion of Doom. Okay. Or any time Rey Mysterio teams up with someone three times his size. Edge? I, the Eddie only Guerrero. reason... The only reason I say that is because any time another wrestler uses Rey Mysterio as a weapon, mm-hmm. I giggle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Can I change my answer? Okay. <laughs> can we, if we do women's tag teams, can we change the question too? <laughs> and then can we change the host of the show, the name of the show, and everything else about all this? But the Jumping Bomb Angels, were they not awesome at one point? For, <laughs> they were. They maybe were. like a, like a eighteen month period, they were the best. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, and so that's they, my new pick. I want to say Air the, Boom too. I want to say the only from the chat room. Uh, Zero Two K says uh, the Dicks. Um, Bobby FJ Town says Head Cheese. Hot Wheels says Babyface Fire, which was Jason Gory and uh, Shima Zion or Zion. That was good. Um, Team Catfish. Rockers or the Mega Powers says Bobby. Um, and Road Warriors from Zero. Wait. Everybody gave, uh, everybody gave two. Uh, Steiner uh, Brothers. For, for I forgot. I loved sexual Brothers. harassment. Sexual harassment. Let's say in these local. Yeah, th- those were like the best, huh? Um, I want to go Heart Foundation. That's a good one. I'm going Heart Foundation. They would. They were like, you know, the nice mix of uh, a, a bigger guy and a technical guy, and they had a really good run. You know, uh, well, I, I, I first I'm like, you know, the thing that the guys that I, I loved watching back in the day were like Demolition. But all around, <clears throat> favorite, you know, yeah, Heart Foundation, yeah. Riz, Riz clarified that he only said one, and you didn't acknowledge it, but he agreed with head cheese. Okay. Oh, Riz. <laughs> all right, thanks for that. And we did get, I think it's all the emails we got. Uh, if, I, if you guys noticed any, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, from this last week. Um, someone sent in... Uh, an email about Steve the Turtle Wiener. Oh, yeah, that just came day. in. That's right. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, let me... Hey there, wrestling mayhemers and ten percenters alike. I hope <laughs> WMS will con- will considering naming today, Tuesday, July thirty first, twenty twelve, Steve the Turtle Wiener Appreciate Appreciation Day. If you know the story of this past weekend's Shikara show in Everett, Mass, then you know why. If you know enough about Steve the Turtle Wiener, then you know why this is worth taking note of. On a side note. Wrestling Observer should stick to what they know, which is falsely naming FCW as a sinking ship, and closing because of a rumored retooling of the WWE developmental system. Hashtag, I appreciate Steve the Turtle, Alex K, Occupy Pro Wrestling, power to the smarks.tk. There you go. There you go. Go check them out. They've been uh, uh, great in getting in the conversation lately. I, on, uh, Google, they have a Google Plus page, actually. Steve Give them a Wiener. Steve Wiener. Uh, and as somebody appropriately uh, before the show, I think in the chat room, said that, uh, yes, Steve the Turtle Wiener, who, who who jobbed to me in Connect 4 one time at Chikara. Um <laughs> He's always been a, well, you know, it's Chikara, so it's a little bit of a different uh, uh, thing. It was always a great thing to see Steve the Turtle Wiener, and he's been a staple in uh, Chikara. Uh, I, the, what, uh, I, the wrestle fan, you were talking about. What was the situation in Chikara this uh, weekend? I did mention because, I, and I had posted before on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page that they were advertising a match for their show in Everett, Massachusetts, uh, pitting Los Ice Creams against the team of Green Ant and Marty Gennetti. 
um, which I'm only you know, even advertised with some Chikara shows before, but it's been like complicated stories. Why hasn't why he hasn't showed up? Well, apparently, Marty Jannetty no showed this event, um, and they found they needed to find a replacement. The replacement that they used was Steve the Turtle Whiner, um, you know, to replace for the uh, tag match. Uh, apparently, uh, some of the fans, or I'm not, I'm not sure if it was some of the fans or it was just like a small amount of fans that like expanded or something or whatever. Uh, were pretty upset, I guess, that Weiner was the replacement um, mm. and sort of made some not-so-great comments um, you know, from, about Steve the Turtle Weiner. Uh, Chikara has come out, and they have come out to back uh, uh, Steve and, you know, saying we're going to use him continually like we've used him before on shows. Uh, he's been a great asset to our roster. And uh, not only Chikara specifically, but a lot of other wrestlers have come out and said the same thing, and a lot of fans as well. Uh, so I and one of the things I guess they wanted to spawn out this whole uh, Steve Weiner Appreciation Day, which um, yeah. hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully that can get uh, something off the ground. I guess for indie wrestling. Good, good. I, I think it's a, it's a good thing in indie wrestling. He's like one of the staples that like y- you get to see out there. You know, so um, excellent, excellent. Uh, let's see. We have a few more interactions here. Uh, real quick, we do have a few touts. Sorry, Chachi. Oh, let me turn him up. Whatever, doesn't dude. like it. Chachi says doesn't like it. It's a tout going straight to the two of them that I actually have on Twitter because they can't stand a wrestling mayhem show. Ow. He touted so hard, I think, that the video stopped on that one. <laughs> I just want to say. My goodness. I thought like something was wrong with my connection, but no. All Too right. hard to tout. Wheels. Wow. Wrestling mayhem show. World's strongest redneck. Glad I was here and in this instead of that studio. Poor Chachi. Oh, wait, we have a comment uh, from Chachi in regards to the towel before that. Oh, there it is. There it is. Thanks, Chachi. Thanks thanks for that. Hey. Uh, all right. And just we... contributing to the conversation. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you social media <laughs> buff Chachi, you. in order to do that, you have to make a 15-second so, video let me get this straight. Michael Sorg and Riz were babysitting Virgil at some point during this <laughs> convention up in uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Sounds great. Should Had we, fun, right? Should we get into that? <laughs> no, yeah. oh, let's no, no, talk. No, no. We're going to talk about Virgil. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll save that for the second half. No, yes, there was, there was the Virgil story. My question, though, is who is Michael Sork? Who is this Michael <laughs> person? <laughs> All right. Person. Why do I not know about him? Yeah. <laughs> Why do I not know? Uh, excellent. And I think I think there was a do, 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 do. there was one more that came up from Wheels here. He had this. I, th- I think this was a late one last night or this morning. Oh, hey, this is Hot Wheels. <laughs> Hi. It's Tuesday. You know what that means? It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. The Sorgatron, Chachi, DJ Lunchbox, Riz, WrestleFan, myself and Bobby. Plumber. <laughs> he almost got there. Oh, we have a that was incredible! Intro. Tout of the week. There you go. Battle Royal by DJ Lunchbox. So much, so many wrestling. So many wrestling figures from, from the Steel City Con. Oh my God! Is it amazing? Go check that out. Follow follow out DJ Lunchbox on Tout as well. Um, there you go. And yeah, yeah. Everybody's tagging them. Uh, hashtag WMS so I can find them. I've been doing such a great job at that. Oh, we'll get into virtual. I'm seeing in the chat room. <laughs> um, okay, we also had uh, a voicemail, like we said, at 412. Oh, wait, hey, um, actually, before we get to the voicemail, I want to give a shout out. I don't know if they're doing this anymore. I know they sent us an email a while ago, and I think I'd like misplaced it Do you want with it? everything. But uh, let's. I just want to give a shout out to the guys that stopped by the booth at uh, Jobber like Nation it. Radio. Care, they got a YouTube there. out there, Jobber it's Nation Radio. Fun. Uh, is the name all together. Uh, but go check them out. They got a... I don't know if this made it to Zack Ryder's thing, but this looks familiar. But they're uh, just a couple guys having fun uh, on YouTube and stuff, so go check them out. Uh, YouTube.com slash Jobber Nation Radio. Because we like to help the competition. We don't think it's competition. Oh! oh well, we competition! Like to, we, like, we like to help the competition and then destroy them! <laughs> in competition so um about a month ago we had a run in with uh a show that shall not be named uh one of their followers decided that he was going to start messing with us 
on Twitter. Um, however, my army is stronger than his army. And he was banned for 30 days. Well, he's back. <laughs> no! Okay. And his first tweet upon his return was to me, Hey, buddy. Thanks for getting me banned. I really appreciated it wholeheartedly. The show seems to have picked up. Great job, guys. What? Really? And I what said, and I said, what? welcome back, good sir. Glad to see you around. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. What? What happened? Was it, is this a swerve? Did we just Chachi, get Twitter you, swerved? Chachi did, Chachi, did you drug him? No, he drugs himself. He actually makes pretty amazing uh, glass bongs. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not. No, seriously, he I, I, he posted some of them on Twitter because uh, I was going back to see if he was still doing the whole hashtag destroy the competition, which he is, just not directed at us because we win. we're stronger than he is. Um, yeah, we win. But no, it, his glass pieces are amazing. <laughs> You've made a friend through, through I, I taught des destruction. I taught him a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my Twitter armor army is stronger than his. What army? It was just you and him. No. No? No, I had a lot of people block him and, and report oh, him. Oh, there for, you go. I, like, seriously, I had a lot of people report him for spam. Okay. Okay. So, I I mean, I, I taught this little... Well, he's, an, he's, a, he's acting like a very nice kid now. But at one point, <laughs> at one point he was acting like a an asshat, and I taught him a lesson. The bottom line here, we will fucking destroy you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chachi, that was solely Chachi. That, Do that's not army. fuck with me on Twitter. That's the Chachi says army right? right there. There you go. Do All not right. fuck with me on Twitter. One last interaction, I believe. Uh, we have a voicemail again from our favorite Big Freaky. Uh, oh. And I don't think he threatens anybody this week, so let's get right into Bullshit. it. Bullshit, it's not him oh, then. Wow. Well, judging by... Uh... Some tweets from the Mayhem Show audience. I take it that the response to Sam Shaw was pretty much what I had. In fact, it may be tame compared to my reaction. Uh, when I saw him on my TV, I just, I just couldn't watch him. It, and I think he's. Uh, well, like, I want to. I want to clarify. Mad Mike had the helm for the Twitter account on Thursday night. I think enough is said. Uh, but no, no, yeah, he's, he's, you know. Uh, does what he does with 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 the Twitter, and, and it's, it was basically uh, you know a lot like his. Uh, he's hard. He's hard on TNA. Um, so yeah. Let me but let me ask this question. So who who is this Sham, Sam Shaw guy? There's a gut check guy, right? Oh oh oh! So I'm guessing it was just. Exactly. I'm guess I'm guessing like, he kind of. Did, I'm guessing he wasn't that impressive, and he didn't win a he, contract, right? Uh no, he did win a contract actually. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to it. I like that. I don't know, man. Like my brain went out. I turned on the Xbox and played Skyrim and missed the rest of the impact. Also, also, uh, apparently, uh, whenever wrestling isn't going very well for Freaky and it loses his intention, he gets drowsy and plays Skyrim. All right. Thank uh, you for what you will. So as far as SmackDown goes, Rod definitely gets the domination of uh, talking time on the Mayhem Show. Is it, and, yeah, you know, that seems yeah. to be, it'd be a shame to me right now because, I want to say, SmackDown is, you know, it's not the, the A Show. It's not, you know, the show designed to blow you away. But it is consistently freaking good. You know, if you can take it for what it is, I think you can get more enjoyment out of it than Raw. Um, yeah, you know, it, it is the fault of just being on Tuesday, and Raw is the last thing we saw of WWE, and therefore, I mean, a lot of times we kind of blow off pay-per-views because Raw was the night before, don't we? Yeah. But I think that's just kind of mm -hmm. our nature, and I don't think everybody <clears throat> here watches SmackDown, right? I'm sorry, I kind of have a life... No. Show I, I haven't. I haven't keep up. I haven't showing SmackDown on a Friday night. It's just a bad idea. Yeah, that's part of it. And and, and I, I mean, I usually if I if I do watch it, and I've been trying to, but I actually missed. 
I missed the week befores and, and everything, and I, I just caught up. I didn't even get to watch the entire thing today, but I just squeezed in most of it, except for maybe the last match today. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a timing thing, really. I mean, well, we're we're pretty involved on, with uh, gigs and stuff on the weekend. I know between Chachi and I. So, uh, it, yeah, my it, girlfriend is a wonderful and patient lady, but and and she'll watch Raw with me on Monday nights. But I think uh, extending it to Friday as well would might exactly. Maybe There's a little bit of overlap. Like like she we, she likes it when I take her out and buy her dinner. And, yeah, you know, lady things on a Friday night. You know, they, I watched yeah. SmackDown. I remember many times when when I still had cable, it was like, oh hey, holy crap, I'm home on a Friday night. I guess I should watch SmackDown. Yeah, it's not a it's not appointment TV for me. That is, and, and it's partly uh-huh. because it is pre taped. Because I mean, SmackDown's going on right now, so we're talking about something that happened a whole week ago. And, I mean, there's that detachment there because of it, and you've had that a little bit because of TNA. Um, cause I know we had spoiler problems on this show and everything. Um, but now that it's live, you know, it, 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 but again, even that's last Thursday. So it's not the focus of our attention. It's not the freshest on our minds, except for me. Cause I usually watch it Monday or Tuesday. So, right. Yeah. And I think, I, I, I don't know. I, I think my, my SmackDown has always been, and I, if you want, I think great wrestling SmackDown does put more of an emphasis on the wrestling, but at the same time, I, re- I like I remember a period of time where like for two years straight I didn't watch SmackDown because I couldn't get it on my because they had something where they were switching networks or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and that was a problem with me too. I think it was on UPN. I didn't have UPN uh, anywhere anywhere to watch it uh, and for I, whatever so, reason. So I just never made it part of like my regular schedule. Exactly. Watch it. Exactly. Whereas Raw, a lot of us have watched Raw every Monday for let's see, I can think probably the last fourteen years. Yeah, but now SmackDown's on Sci-Fi, and I, I actually, I, I'm not sure, but I heard there's a lot of good stuff coming up on Sci-Fi. So, <laughs> really, you know. really, really, really. <laughs> is there something coming up on Sci-Fi? I, it's is, is I do they show anything other than wrestling on there anymore? They might show very attractive men who have had haunted experiences in their past, tell oh. their stories, but I, I can't guarantee it. Tell me about that. Wanna, tell me about that. You, you might want to check it out on Wednesdays at ten, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just a guess. I'm just guessing. So you got what is this program that you got involved with, sir? Are we ready right now? Let's do I'm it. Fucking now. Let's do uh, it. Fucking now. Not this. Not this. All right, here we go. Uh, Sci-Fi School Spirits is the show, and I I'm not really sure how I ended up on there. Uh, the basis of the show is it, it, it's a reality show that wants to recount. Students, whether it's high school, college, whatever, students, teachers, uh, experiences they had throughout their lives that may be haunted or, or, you know, whatever. And so one day I was working on, which I just finished grad school yesterday. Woo! Yay! Uh, congratulations. Um, and so anyways, I was working on a paper one night and they actually called me. And it turns out a buddy of mine who's getting his own show and it's a long story kind of pitched this idea that we had in college and it, long story short they ended up flying me to new york twice to interview me about this uh haunted fraternity house that we had and as it all comes together it's going to be myself it's going to be and i know you guys have a boner for the rwa so shane taylor's <laughs> in there too so you're gonna love it uh he was a fraternity brother of mine we're both going to be on national television tomorrow night. That's actually that was him. If you could go back to that beginning scene, Hold on. you don't even have to. But that was him. <laughs> that strapping young man. Um, there he is. That was Shane Taylor. That was his wow, actor. Wow, really? <laughs> and uh, they flew us out there to interviews a few times about this experience that we had, and they did a phenomenal job of editing it together. Uh, making it more entertaining than we could ever possibly make it on our own. And it's going to air on, somehow, it's going to air on national television tomorrow night, 10 o'clock on the Sci-Fi Network. Amazing. Awesome. It's awesome. So you see, you're, you're showing the video there, and I have a very, very small part. And they just so happen to choose it for the sneak peek. So I don't know if that's my whole part or if there's going to be more. But what happened at the time is, you know, the, these guys, can I tell the story Sorg, or is nobody really interested? Oh, uh, you, you can, you can. I mean, just so All people right. kind of get an idea. <laughs> there I go. Being Spoilers. a frat boy, smashing bottles and high fiving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you're not, you're not in the reenactment though. You're just, that's so, that's right there, the reenactment. Oh wait, are you, are you in there? 
This is see that see that that guy right there. <laughs> no, not that guy. The good-looking guy. Okay. In the flannel okay. Flannel <laughs> Yeah. I'm the leader of the pack, as always. I see. And uh, so, anyways, you know, bottom line, uh, we had a, a fraternity house that apparently was haunted. We heard stories, this and that, and and me being the badass that I am, you know, I wanted to prove the whole the whole scenario wrong to everybody. And I don't believe in ghosts. I didn't at the time. Kinda did for a while. I'm still iffy. Uh, I, I feel like everything's a coincidence. But uh, you know, brought the guys upstairs to try to show them. It, it just try to it, it to show them this is all a hoax. There's nothing to worry about. Messed around with the ghost a little bit, and it, you gotta watch the show to see what happened after that. What I ended up unintentionally doing was stirring things up, making the hauntings worse. Luckily, I was out of the picture after that. So I'm still alive, and I'm able to be on the Mayhem show every Tuesday if you want me. But uh, <laughs> uh, it was it was pretty wild, and, and they did a great job of capturing that. Uh, the show actually has already been signed for a second season. Uh, they I think three three episodes in, they re-signed it for a second season. I don't know if they're already filming or not, but it's really been taken off. I'm lucky to be a part of the opening season. It's kind of just one of those fluky things, though, that – that works out. You live a crazy life and crazy, crazy shit happens to you. You so. stumble, you stumble onto a uh, basic cable TV program. That's what happens in this business. That's right. I, I say national television stardom is what I stumbled upon. That's right. I mean, you, the way you put it, you, yeah. <laughs> I, like, like I said, this is my last night. I'm dedicating my last night to the Mayhem Show before I become immortal, before I become a superstar. And if Chuck. Thank God Chuck Roberts doesn't watch this show because he hates you guys. But uh, I've suspected. I've suspected. That's <laughs> totally. Joke. I don't know what he likes or dislikes. Obviously, since I'm being fired tonight. But um, <laughs> that, <that's, laughs> I, I, whatever. Eh, it's really funny that you say he hates us, considering how many times he thanked us after the show on Saturday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys did a great job. I was watching you the whole time. That was phenomenal camera work. Phenomenal. Switching back and forth between angles. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have jerked off back there, if there Whoa. was like a more private area, I would have. Yeah, I was kind of wide open. Uh, speaking <laughs> of which, um, let's go in. And with that, that's, that's a good transition to Amateur Falling Down, the Indie Minute uh, with Russell Fan. Jer- jerking off, the perfect transition. To the <laughs> okay. Perfect transition to anything, sir. Exactly. The first thing I'm going to talk about is IWC. Uh, their uh, event Proving Ground was this past weekend in White Oak, Pennsylvania, and I know Sorgatron Media was in attendance for that, That's so right. I believe... Uh, I, I heard it went off as a really great event that showcased some of the young talent in that area. Well, it, the funny thing is is it, it, it was called Proving Grounds, and it was the Young Talent Initiative. So going into it, I jokingly referred to it as the ultimate amateur falling <laughs> down <laughs> show. Um, however... It, it, like I said, it was a joke, and the guys that they had there uh, did an, a fantastic job. I gotta say, yeah, and I, I definitely uh, had a little bit of my reservations because I looked at the card and I'm like, I haven't even heard of any of these guys. Usually, like you hear like a few names, it's like, oh, I heard of he's over in Ohio. Oh, I hear he's over, you know, here or something like that. So I had no expectations going into this show, and uh, I, I think thankfully it was a uh, it was pretty. It was a, a positive experience for, I want to say, 90% of the matches. Yes. That's a, that's a good <laughs> yeah, gauge, I, right? I, I mean, it seems like a good gauge it, it tonight. Was, <laughs> um, no, that's an accurate number. We could back it up if we wanted to. But. Yeah, yeah, which I won't. But, no, that, like, I think... <laughs> but Chachi doesn't want to do math. But we're not going to no, do no, math I don't want on this show. It has uh, nothing to do with math. Mm-hmm. I, I was interested, actually, to see what you guys would think about that because... I, I know I'm a little bit biased, but mm-hmm. to be honest with you, I kind of walked into it the same way as like, well, let's see. You don't really know what you're going to get when you walk into something that's as experimental as that was. Yeah. And really, this was our first time doing it. I, I've heard that other promotions have done it in the past. Didn't know how this would turn out. But it it was really enjoyable. It was one of my more enjoyable shows to work for uh, this year. Exactly. And there were some great matches. Even guys, and, and I'm a big guy, and, and Joe Dabrowski always teases me, but I'm a guy that I, I feel like you have to look the part to play the part. Yeah. There were some guys that didn't look the part that were phenomenal. Uh, and they had me, you know, uh, I didn't have to do commentary <laughs> that night. I was just doing the backstage interviews and, and filming for Aftershock. So I got to watch a lot of the matches without having to 
to talk and distract myself. And, and I was able to be a fan for probably three quarters of the show. And there was some really good stuff there. And I really hope we get to see a lot of those guys again Definitely. coming up in August and going forward. Uh, as far as uh, you said with the uh, looking the part, um, uh, there, 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 was, he is. there, was, there he is yes, right there. Yeah, there was a guy, uh, Keith Hout, or Hot, however you I think it's it. Hot, because the finisher yeah. was called the Hot Mess. Okay, so Keith Hot. <laughs> so, uh, Best name for a finisher ever. We're, we're setting up, and uh, the short, chubby, hairy guy with, comes... With Zelda uh, on his crotch. Yeah, uh, he comes walking out from behind uh, the... The tables that were set up for the uh, backstage area, and he he's wearing uh, green trunks with the Legend of Zelda, uh, Twilight Princess, Hyrule Shield on his crotch, and on his ass it says the Legend of uh, Hot. And he gets in the ring, and I'm like, oh man, I cannot wait to watch this. I'm like, this is going to be funny in a bad way, <laughs> and. And it wasn't. Uh, no, it wasn't. I, the the guy is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he is the ultimate proof that you cannot judge a book by its cover. Exactly. Exactly. Because I mean, you you see him. He's short. He he weighs he weighs two fifteen, and you're like, oh man. I'm like, this guy is just gonna uh, be a short little powerhouse. He's not gonna have any quickness to him at all. But he started running those ropes and. That, that chubby little fellow was quick as hell. <laughs> He'll call us. Yeah, I, is this, <laughs> chubby I, I have to say, I on my headset all night. <laughs> I, I started doing this in January, and I, I mean, I'm just under twelve shows for this year alone, mm-hmm. um, or working the ringside camera, and I have to say that this was the most entertaining one mm-hmm. that I've worked because of the uh, these new new guys. Uh, shocking the hell out of me while I'm sitting there watching. I mean, uh, there was exceptions. Uh, if there, there was probably a match or uh, a match or a few wrestlers that I wasn't exactly impressed with. But I, I mean, it was the, the best show I've seen this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most fun, most interesting, yeah. most surprising. I think is the thing. Yeah. And I remember, like, well, when we first started going to these shows, it was like seeing these guys and like, wow, that guy really, that really, that guy really came out of nowhere, you know, or even like, you know, we'll go to these, these shows and, and like a new face pops up. Like, you know, I think we've kind of had this experience with Dalton Castle when he popped up sometime last year yeah. and now we can't get enough of them. And I'm wondering which of them, these guys are going to be that, uh, those guys I'm suspecting might be that we'll Keith see where Hodge. he goes. Other than Keith Hodge is one of them. <laughs> uh, Andrew palace, one of the guys, I know he's a trainee there at IWC, uh, along with, uh, I believe it's Brian McDowell that was in the six man with uh, our friend mm-hmm. David Demira that killed Doc Remedy. But uh, it, it was so impressive. The, the third match was the six the six man tag, and right after that match, it wasn't even intermission yet. Somebody came over and pre ordered the DVD. Like that. Yeah, was, that's how that, impressed the crowd was with this. I'm glad I didn't want to speak up before I heard what you guys had to say about it because, like I said, I feel like I am somewhat biased, but. Hey, surprising is the best word for the show and, and coming in as experimental. And uh, even though I'm going to be fired from the IWC, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say that all night because it's happening. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But but you got to hand it to Chuck Roberts and Justin Idol for being able to find guys like this. Mm-hmm. And I know they had a little bit of a fire lit under their ass to really perform because they're they're where they want to be. Especially you talk about Keith Hot. Talk, talk about a class act in the back. The guy was so happy to be there. He was so appreciative for the opportunity. So you would think it would it would get to his nerves. He'd be nervous. But he went out there and he did his thing. And he did it to the best of his ability. And especially the guy that he was up against, which I don't know if I can – without my notes, I don't have anybody's name. It's Tony tough. Johnson. Uh, Tony Johnson. Yeah. You, can't, you can't short him because he was part of the match too. Both of those guys went out there and they performed to the best of their and ability. And this was um, – I'm and sorry. great. This was uh, it, it, this was tagged on the on the website as being an ICW, ICWA tryout match, which is their 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 school. So, yeah, um, yeah they held tryout match at the Iron City Wrestling Academy, which is their school uh, for pro wrestlers looking for a spot on the proving ground. At the tryout, these were the guys that stood out. So these were guys; these were like the walkups. Yeah, they really did. I actually I talked to them. I, I unfortunately didn't get an interview with either of them for aftershock, so it's nothing anybody's going to see. 
But but just in the downtime, I got to talk to both of the guys, and they drove a couple of hours mm -hmm. uh, just to go to the IWC training school. So you're talking guys, young guys, who knows how much money they have to spend, but they're blowing it on gas just to get here, just for an opportunity to be in the IWC. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's how that's how into it they are, mm -hmm. and they they show up. They obviously they obviously showed Chuck that they were able to to put on a show, and then to go out there and and entertain everybody. And that was one of the highlights of the night. Uh, I don't know if it was a highlight because you were more surprised as to how it turned out or if it was just generally that good. It stuck but it out. Really, it really was that good. And I hope, especially, uh, you know, with uh, Keith Hot, I, I'm hoping there's a way because it's tough. You know, you, you talk about you got to have the look and it's tough to find what works for him. And I'm not a promoter and I don't run a wrestling company. Yeah. So I don't want to give any suggestions. But if if somebody, hopefully, hopefully Chuck, or anybody out there, and find the right way to use this guy. Uh, I think they're they're looking at something. Hey, I just want to say uh, real quick uh, a couple names since I have the names in front of me because it was really hard. Because unfortunately, as great as these guys were, none of the names stuck out to me. Um, even listening to commentary all night as I, as as I was supervising that. Uh, but guys that really stuck out to me through the night, uh, Brandon Thurston was one. He had a great match with Gory. I thought to start off the card like crazy moving the submission stuff i can't explain uh definitely a match to check out uh like i said andrew palace uh, although uh there was a crack on uh and, and i agree he does look a lot like carlito even down to the purple shorts he was wearing that's okay he's gonna be on aftershock check wow, it out amazing like, amazing and uh, like i said uh, uh tony johnson keith hotter we've been talking about and uh and, and uh interestingly jimmy nuts of uh of uh rwa fame James Nutter. James, it's James Nutter's, right? He's yeah. going by on here. So uh, that'll be interesting uh, to see what he can do there. Maybe a Pocket Rockets reunion with Iden Vale? I'm only throwing speculation out. We're going to start I, that I, rumor right here. Before we I don't know, on. man. I think I think he's going to bring in, and I don't know anything, as I, I really don't, but I think there's going to be some other newcomers coming in with him. That's my guess. Okay. Um, That's my guess, but we'll see. Uh, before we move on to... Uh, agree with Justin's assessment of Keith Hot. Uh, we walked in, we were about two hours early. <laughs> Give or take. Like, we were earlier than we're normally early. It was a little harder to spot who the wrestlers yeah, were for the night. <laughs> right. And uh, we walked in, and the first person that walked up and shook our hands was Keith Hot. Mm -hmm. And he had a smile on his face then. And then he disappeared. He came back with a sight. Still had a smile on his face. Got in the ring, did his thing, left the ring with a smile on his face. After the entire crowd left, he came out in his street clothes, still smiling, and helped take down the ring and put it away. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah. uh, the attitude is there. He, he is just happy to ha have the shot, and he deserves it. Awesome. Uh, last thing on IWC before we move on, I we're kind of mon monopolizing IWC today. Uh, but Plumber's here. Yeah. And it's exactly. our last night you know, with him. He's going to have us. all I know. You're going to have sci-fi signs behind you if we ever have you on again. Maybe. Or maybe I'll maybe I'll move on. You know, MTV could be next. Who knows? I may be president of the United States next time you have me on here. <laughs> I'm not stopping. But, of course, Cage Fury is coming up in August. Uh, IWCWrestling.com for more information on that. Zima Ion, Shima Zion to some of you, returning. The current X Division champion, of course, in TNA. So go check that out. That's going to be a really hot show. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and I, I think we should, uh, WrestleFan, I don't know if this is the next one on your list, uh, yeah. but I think we should talk about $5 Wrestling. Yeah, $5 Wrestling had their big uh, iPay-per-view this past weekend. Uh, I heard around from you know the Twitter, you know everything I've heard from people that watched it, that it was a great event. Uh, I believe Riz uh, of the show watched the event, and he does have some notes. Yes, he does. Uh, that including, including a tout, I believe. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> uh, he, he, he writes a couple of uh, couple notes. One, production of the iPay-Per-View was $5 quality slash spoof of how <laughs> iPay-Per-Views usually go. Cabana threw, a jet, threw in a Gabe Sapolsky jab. $5. They started out with... $5, they started out, he's saying. $5, like D-O-L-L-A-H. D-O-L-L-A-H. They started out with two microphones, but ended up with three people hovering over one. They started the show with that long roll and uns unsureness of them being online and doing the countdown, etc. Well, uh, they, let me, the okay, and he right. continues. Let, let, let me give you a rundown of the names on this card. Big Donnie, 
who is extremely fat with skinny legs, uh, macho oh. fatness, yeah, macho fatness, and the only good match was ended by when a horrible, gigantic wrestler came out to Kamala's music and totally messed everything <laughs> up, a title which nobody knows where it came from. Uh, three, Freight Train is fucking awesome. He comes out to <laughs> come on and ride it, and it seems that Freight Train may be getting the biggest pops around the feds, and I'm waiting for IWC or RWA to pick up Freight Train and the rest of the guys from $5 <laughs> Wrestling. Plumber, get on that, will ya? <laughs> Why does everybody always – you wouldn't believe how many messages I get on Facebook about the IWC and what we should do or what I should do for them. I don't know who's watching right now, but I have zero power. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it takes Chuck seven to ten days to even return my call about how are you doing, Chuck. So I have no power. <laughs> don't message me. I, I can't do anything for you uh, other than deliver the interviews that you love on www.iwcwrestling.com after Chuck. Yo, nice plug in there. Anything else there, uh, Russell fan? Uh, the last thing, the couple last things I want to note. The first is that uh, our good friends at Prime Wrestling. Oh wait, 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 uh, wait! Uh, Five Dollar Wrestling. We didn't finish that. Oh, that's right. We do have a. Uh, we do. Well, well, first we have the town. And we also, I, I found a tweet today from Johnny Gargano that says the Five Dollar Wrestling IP review was so good! Exclamation <laughs> mark. I just want to put that out there. Uh, all right, and yes, we do have a tout from the Riz. <laughs> Christmas cross faces in one show and freight train being awesome. That's all you need to know about five dollar wrestling. Go check it out. There we go. There you go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Move on there, sir. Wrestle fan? There we go. There you are. <laughs> oh, the internet's choked. There we go. Okay. Like I did. Uh, the internet's broken. The internet does not like you tonight. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is our friends at Prime Wrestling have their big resolution event coming up uh, in Cleveland, Ohio at the Jacobs Pavilion. Uh, a couple good matches are announced. I believe Jason Bain will be going one-on-one -on -one with Rhino. Uh, it was going to be an interesting matchup. And recently announced was uh, Jason Gorey, friend of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, taking on Facade nice. uh, in a casket match. Wow. Uh, that's going to be interesting stuff. I went to resolution with uh, Sorgatron. Uh, last year uh, when they had it back when mm -hmm. they were PWO and it was an amazing event. Uh, Jacob's Pavilion was a great uh, uh, arena to hold this event. Um, I would encourage you to go there if you want uh, to get tickets and more information. I believe it's primewrestling.com that yes. you can uh, go. Yes. And, to, uh, and, I, and I just showed a little bit. There was the poster of uh, uh, there was the poster of uh, 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 the Zach Gowan uh, Gregory Iron uh, uh, match here uh, says I looked up to you Zach until you looked down on me Fantastic stuff. Uh, uh, ben Fr Ben Fruit that used to wrestle there uh, until recently has been doing these posters, and I am I I got to talk to him a little bit at the last taping, and uh, I I love the job he's doing with this stuff. There's a poster that just got posted on Facebook a little bit ago again for Resolution, uh, featuring the friends of the show, uh, Gory and Facade, uh, saying Facade wants to keep his TV title, but I will seal the coffin on his dreams. Like this great stuff, and of course the Jimmy Jacobs stuff for the last taping that came up. Um, uh, great, great stuff going on over there. I believe Riz is going to be joining us uh, up there in Cleveland uh, next month. I think is that, that is the plan. I forgot that he's not on Skype to answer me. Um, <laughs> whoops, whoops! I'm used to him being there, you know. Uh, Blame Plumber. Sorry. Uh, Damn it! Well, well, while you're talking about Facade and Gordon, I know I'm speaking out of turn, and you can just mute me at any point. But Facade and Gordon will also be battling August 25th at Cage Fury for the IWC. And it's going to be a first ever match. This I'm proud of this one because the whole idea came to fruition on IWC Aftershock when Facade said, let's hang weapons from the cage. And, and fans started replying and Chuck Roberts actually listened and he, and he made it a weapons cage match. So, uh, you know, you're, you're going to see them at Prime Wrestling. You can see them also if, that's, if, if you're from the Pittsburgh area and that's too far of a drive. You can see them at IWC. I know I don't want to hog IWC for the whole show. But, uh, <laughs> well, this, we got to guess. So, you know, the, that's The that's promos fine. that I got from these guys are the reason that you have not seen IWC Aftershock because <laughs> what happened after Proving Ground was so over the top that the censors may not allow IWC Aftershock Episode 12 to hit the airwaves. So... You may not see what happened after Proving Ground, but if you can't make Prime Wrestling, I encourage you to make it August 25th 
to Core Time Sports Center Elizabeth PA to see the weapons cage match between these two guys. I think they genuinely, genuinely hate each other. I don't know. <laughs> and it's been great stuff in both promotions from uh, both these guys. Uh, mm-hmm. If you haven't yet, check out the Prime Wrestling uh, where uh, it was the last TV title match between Facade and Gory. Uh, go check it out. It was a good match. Um, all right. Is there anything else there before hey, we go on? There's one final thing that I do want to note really quick. Um, Anarchy Championship Wrestling has a show coming up this uh, this Sunday uh, at Hooligans in San Antonio, Texas, uh, called Fall from Grace. Uh, it's going to be a big night. Uh, the top big matches on the show, it's Jerry Lynn in his retirement tour, uh, his final match in San Antonio. He'll be going one-on-one with one man, Mike Dell, uh, and then in a three-way match for the ACW heavyweight title, um, Jake is Pliskin, the new champion, will defend against ACH and friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, Rachel Summerlin, uh, in a three-way match. If you want your tickets for that event, you can go to anarchychampionshipwrestling.com, check them out, and go support uh, some great stuff down in Texas. And that is the Indie Minute for this week. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good job there, Russ Fan, and thank you, Plummer, for joining us uh, uh, for the extra uh, commentary there about IWC. Uh, of course. Uh, now, real quick, we're going to go to uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. Give you, give you a little bit of preview of whatever poop jokes and stuff might be happening on over there. And a little poop bit jokes. of you, something else going on in the area. And we'll be right back with the Remember When. Smell the pie through the camera. Smell the pie through the camera. Yeah, you know that that picture is so huge on my screen, too. Smell it. Smell it. That's a huge pie. He's going to fire me tonight. That's what's the best part about being on the show is. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> he, told me I, he told me I went over the top on the last uh, episode of Aftershock. And then uh, he didn't talk to me for two days. <laughs> a brainwash. No, I had this sword sitting here forever, and I didn't want to use it on the show. Because apparently sharp objects are what get you banned from the internet. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's time for that segment we all love called Remember When? This week on Remember When? Well, it's going to be some fresh memories. Um, we were at Steel City Con, and we had a Sorgatron Media booth. We were selling uh, IWC, uh, RWA DVDs, of, of course, uh, Pimpin' the Wrestling Mayhem Show, everything. Um, and and I thought it would be a great uh, uh, thing to go to because, uh, you know, John Morrison and Melina were announced to be there as, as their celebrity guests. Um, and, uh, and I was, you know, I didn't know what kind of placement what, what I would have. And it turns out I was on the row. We were on the row uh, right along. I could see Melina turn left. There's Melina right down the row at the end. Uh, we were probably like four tables in, something like that. Uh, but right, my, right beside me was Virgil. Uh, as you can see, actually, you can see Melina's banner in the background there. And this is now my timeline picture, by the way. Uh, thank you for, uh, <laughs> at Fuzzwad Frank, uh, from Encircling to begin for this picture. It's amazing. Uh, but yeah, no, Virgil, uh, uh Virgil was there, um, the whole time. Um, and, uh. <laughs> And, and now I've encountered Virgil before. I've shot two shows with him on, on the Legend shows up in uh, Franklin for IWC. Uh, you know, I've talked to him briefly. <laughs> Sorry, just saw chat. Um, I talked to him briefly at an IWC show, if that's possible. And um, and I had the entire weekend with him. So I thought, okay, this could be, you know, great. You know, we're selling wrestling DVDs right beside Virgil. He's on a couple of them, whatever. Um, it, was a, it was an interesting weekend. I, I don't... It was an interesting weekend. Uh, and we have pictures to prove it. Um, first of all, I got I to gotta give props to Riz for this idea for uh, the pose. Mm. Uh, of course, everybody knows the Lonely Virgil meme, uh, lonelyvirgil.tumblr.com. Thank you, uh, Zero 2 k in the chat room. Uh, so we made our own Lonely Virgil pictures when he left one day. Um, and, uh, and, and he's not the only one. I did one, too. Uh, there it is. There you go. There you go. I don't know how you weren't video. scared that he was going to come back and see you doing that because I've been terrified. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, it, it was really weird because he was he was there and it, you know Riz, Riz is in the chat room because uh, uh, we we were, we would sit there and, and he would walk out from our booth and talk to us and then disappear. <laughs> 
disappear. <laughs> the long he, was way- he was buying out other booths. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was interesting. It was, you know, there was, there was several things to learn from Virgil. Uh, you, you, why would you have anybody train you that uh, uh, didn't wrestle in WrestleMania and make, did a main event at uh, Madison Square Garden so everybody should go to uh, FCW, uh, which is Vince's thing? Um, yeah. and, you know, Steve Kern and Harley Race, which I don't think is accurate, Dusty Rhodes, you know, all those guys. Uh, I learned about the uh, uh, the the trans the trans you know change before the euro between the euro and the dollar. Um, <laughs> what he knew that? Yeah, I mean, he <laughs> would go because <laughs> he told me about how he went went to he went to Europe and he would charge like twenty dollars for a photo in euros, and that's really like forty dollars US. I didn't know the exchange was that that much. Um, but but yeah yeah that, that's that's apparently how it went and also about how he how he made like twenty thousand dollars by selling comp tickets to WrestleMania or I'm sorry SummerSlam uh, ninety two in Wembley Stadium, um, amongst many many other little tidbits uh, 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 over his his years. Uh, now LB you you spent an afternoon with Virgil. I, I did spend an afternoon with Virgil. It was a very interesting experience. Um, he was <laughs> he was something else. He was really nice to me uh, because uh, he would ask me um, baseball scores, and I downloaded the ESPN app just mm-hmm. to tell him baseball scores. He asked me the time, and uh, without fail, every single time, every 10 minutes or so, he said, what time is it now? And I'd tell him, and he'd say, what? And I'd tell him again. <laughs> um, he... Uh, he was crazy. At, at, at one point, he's uh, out in front of his table talking to some people, and somebody brings him lunch, and he just takes it, walks behind his table, sits down, and starts eating spaghetti, still yeah. talking to this crowd of people, still trying to sell him shit. Um, at one point, he, uh, he, he walked over, and he started mumbling about uh, John Morrison. He's like, I'm about to go over there and ask him uh, what the fuck he did to get fired with holding his girlfriend's hand or whatever and uh and i'm like i don't know man uh he's like because i'll tell you what if vince if if you if you vince fires you he's done with your ass he's fucking done with your ass he's the filthiest mouth person i've ever met and i've met me um <laughs> and he's like but if you if you ask if you ask yourself to go then then you know uh that's it <laughs> i'm like yeah man all right <laughs> um, after he finished his, uh, his Olive Garden, he would, uh, <laughs> randomly spit in the bag when time was going slow, um, <laughs> which was really fucking gross. Um, and he'd just disappear for like half an hour at a time, which was nice. Cause then I could pull out my phone and read it without <laughs> him asking <laughs> me what time it was. So, um, it was interesting. He was, he was super nice. At one point, um, I had to leave the booth and I left it under the care of Lady Lunchbox and her sister who had bought some Iron Man toys. And <laughs> they were playing with the Iron Man toys on the, on the table and Virgil just walks up and he's like, he was just baffled by the entire thing. Like he'd reach out to touch it and then pull his hand back. And he was <laughs> just so confused. It was interesting. It was, he's, it was interesting. And he was like complaining about nobody making any money and the ATM was down and fucking everybody up. And then he left half an hour before the show was over. <laughs> that was surprise. my time with Not surprised. Not surprised. Hey, and, and, and Sunday, the best was uh, the one time when he, one of the times where he walked off uh, was with a Jedi. And I believe Riz <laughs> pointed this out that the Jedi was completely in character talking to him. Uh, and, and they just walked off side by side, like seemingly into the sunset down the con- the Steel City Con Isle. I attempted to get a picture, uh, but it didn't work out too well. Um, yeah, yeah, and he has no idea what Star Wars is either. Wait a minute, lunch, oh, no, Bob, what shirt are you he wearing? Doesn't... What shirt is that? What's that? What, like, what shirt is Lunchbox wearing is what I need to know. Flash. Oh, Flash. 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 All right. So is Riz going to talk for more than 60 seconds? Because I'll be right back. No, no, Riz isn't here. Riz isn't here. <laughs> so, then Chachi, uh, you gotta go. What? <laughs> Chachi, tell your sixty second story about Virgil. I gotta change. Oh, I, I don't have a story about Virgil. I didn't go. Suck it up, damn it. Fine. This one time, <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting at work on Friday, and I receive what? I receive a text message uh, from Sword <laughs> that says, uh, "Yeah, so I'm at the Steel City Con, and uh, my booth is right next to Virgil's." 
So I gave Sorg the best advice that I could give anyone uh, in that situation, which was uh, request a new location <laughs> because he's going to ruin your sales. And that wasn't <laughs> too inaccurate. Um, yeah, because, I mean, there were I, there was actually a fellow that came up to me and said, are you responsible for Virgil being here? Are you responsible? <laughs> and I'm like, no. And he looked at me like, Good. <laughs> I had no idea what to think of that. Um, uh, but can I can I share another brief Virgil story? Sure, sure. <laughs> I'll make it quick. Uh, here in Pittsburgh, we have a little place called Market Square. It's a nice little just cobblestone square. A lot of shops, a lot yeah, of food, beautiful and stuff like place that. downtown. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's a random Saturday afternoon. I had just gotten done playing uh, racquetball with with my friend Carmen, and Wojciech was there, and we decided to go to Las Velas, local delicious Mexican eatery, uh, to get a bite to eat. And uh, who should have their table set up randomly in Market Square? No events going on, but there's fucking Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> just the this weather's happened. nice. For I'll real. set up my table and maybe make some money. What the fuck? <laughs> You know Virgil. I don't have any good stories. Make something up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But Very nice. and if everybody doesn't end this show in a, in a flash T-shirt, you should all be fired. But uh, <laughs> I do know my wife did karate for a while, and she did sparring and a lot of that stuff. She was number ten in the entire country, and you can see some of her fights on my YouTube channel. Plumber loves you. It's original. It's it's a name that I don't use for anything else. But uh. Apparently, he showed up with a million-dollar belt at a couple karate tournaments thinking that might make some sense. So uh, I, I, I wish you guys didn't make fun of the guy because I feel really bad for him. I like feel really bad for him. Well, you know, you, know you, you feel bad for him, um, but I think, I think uh, you, you talk to him enough and you feel less bad for him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I know this sounds horrible. I know it sounds horrible, and, and I want to say he's a good guy. You're um, trying to be as nice as you could possibly be. I right really now. am because I I don't want to. Yeah, it, it, but he's not. That was the most I have to be honest. Correct version of he's a douchebag as I've ever heard. A Riz, uh, ask Riz. The more you talk to him, the less you want to talk to him. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. There's just things I learned. I, things I learned about like like, <laughs> and, and we can hear Chachi <laughs> taking pills because this is <laughs> his anti-Virgil pills. Um... <laughs> Oh, Chachi, you'll experience this sooner or later working these shows. Uh, it's inevitable. Um, but just just some of the stuff and, and and the way the way you know some people get bad mouth just for not spending money. You know, it was just yeah. Well, from what yep. I understand, he doesn't take bumps, so I don't think I'll experience. <laughs> that doesn't mean you won't be at a show. Uh, because no, seriously, he's been at an IWC <laughs> show that he wasn't at least booked on the show for. Because I already showed up. I'm like, oh, hey, Virgil's here. You know, this would be what, what Are I you still talking have. About Legends 2000. No, no, it was it was a court time show. Oh, it was a court time. Show. To, how to get a ride to court time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was a court time show, and and he was just was there. I walked in. I was like, oh shit, Virgil's here. Okay, and I hadn't talked to him at the Legend shows or anything like that. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, I guess so. It'll, the, he has a spot in the show or something. Show went by. I'm like, hey, there's no Virgil, but he's still over there. Okay, um, that's enough. He's, oh, and Wheel says he's been to uh, RWA twice. Has he been on the show? He took the bus. Uh, yeah, Riz, Riz confirmed that he he took the bus there. Um, with his table. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured him riding the bus with his table. No, no, the, the table. They provide the table. A rolled up banner. They they were they provide the table for sure. Um, although there was some interesting interesting part where he was telling somebody how he wanted to glue a table to his butt or something like that. I hope we weren't too hard on Virgil. <laughs> Can we redo that? Can we redo Can that? We redo we're that? Just, we're just saying no. things that happened. We were. We were. Virgil has accomplished more in the wrestling industry than any of us ever will. But he's also horrible. Yes. <laughs> but that okay, okay. You remember oh, this is for gold, definitely. All right, my old my old statement of it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair or not. Uh, because this has happened. Uh, you're still an asshole, okay? Uh, yeah. I don't care if you've been to SummerSlam or not. You're still an asshole. <laughs> there you go. Or whatever you your opinion of Virgil. What's that? Remember when... Who <laughs> shouldn't even remember Dusty when... Dusty Rhodes was wrestling <laughs> Macho King Randy Savage on Saturday night's main event. 
and Million Dollar Man came down one aisle, and Virgil came down the other aisle, and they had their hundred dollar bills one by one, and they bought every seat in the front row until they got to the middle of that front row. And when they got to the middle of that front row, there was one man that wouldn't take that hundred dollar bill, and he stood up and he ripped it up and he threw it on the ground. And that man was Dustin Rhodes, who would later become the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, and they hit him in the head with a wooden chair, and he fake bled. And as a six, seven, eight-year-old kid, I don't know what I was, but I cried, and I cried for hours. And I had uh -huh. it on tape because my mom taped it for me, and she named the tape Wrestler Mania, and I thought it was the big show of the year, and I watched it for the next five years. And for the next five years, every time Dustin Rhodes bled because of Virgil, I cried. And that's why Virgil now has a spot in my heart that can never be replaced. And now I feel bad for talking shit on him. And we need to delete everything we just said. Actually, I think I want to insert that in randomly. Because <laughs> uh, that, was, that was fucking amazing, dude. Well, I feel terrible now because I love Virgil. I but that, I mean, just, I but, that should, but that should make you hate Virgil more. Because like every no, time you see him, like you yeah, did you're right. Dustin. Actually, you're right. You know, you know, you know where it turned on. You know, Zio, screw. We, we haven't gone to the thing, guys. Uh, we're still on the show. Fuck it. Um, you know where where my opinion of Virgil turned as a mark. What do you ever want to tell it? Was the one time I read an article in WWF magazine in the back where Virgil was talking about he didn't give any, get any shots at any belts or anything like this. This is back in the like candy cane tights days. And I remember whoever was writing the article, probably Vince Russo or something, was like, well, if you won a few more matches, maybe you get more accomplished. He won. He three, was a good guy at the time. He won 311 matches. Yes, yes, from the chat room. Uh, 311 uh wins 402 losses and i guess that's nine draws or whatever so uh yeah yeah okay now to mad mike's minute of man greetings mayhem fans it's mad mike once again with your minute of mayhem uh and i know last week i had some audio difficulties but it was just me bullshitting about raw 1000 which was a good show um five and open layer two TNA and to Dixie Carter and friend of the show Dave Lagana because I know each and every one of you listen, especially you Dixie, because I know you need your weekly fill of DJ lunchboxes, dulcet tones um, as you hold your iPhone up to your vagina. Anyway, um, TNA. You know, you and I were getting along so well. I, I even I even spent money on you like hard earned money and um well ever since I did that you have done nothing to justify any future purchases because every show since Destination X has been a big piece of shit um you, you, you're doing Jerry Springer storylines again. You're rehashing a really bad version of the NWO. It's just... And, I mean, you know, to top it all, that, that stuff I can slide with. Because Austin Aries is still your champion, even though you'd never really know it by watching the product. But, uh... You let Velvet Sky go... That's not a way to keep me watching your product. Especially when you have Madison Rain making out for all Hefner. It's, it's just, y you need, go back to a month ago. N none, of, none of these internet podcasts would dare say that you were having bad programming. Yeah, I want a little joke around that, but I don't give a shit. TNA, you need to get back to the X Division shit. Do you know why that month of programming was so good? Hulk Hogan wasn't on it. Sting wasn't on it. You actually showed real wrestling matches. Like Shima and Kenny King this week. That was phenomenal. Pardon the pun. 
That was a great match. You need to do more of that and less of Claire raping AJ Styles. Because it's kind of clear that that's probably what happened. Either that or some stupid bullshit where Daniels drugged AJ, put him in bed, and then Claire just jumped on top of him. Because she's probably not really pregnant because she was smoking in one scene, which no one, of course, has brought up. But I digress. TNA, fix yourself, alright? Wash ass. Make it better. Peace, bitches. Thank you, Mad Mike, for that. And uh, also, Riz uh, uh, lets us know there what DiBiase Virgil is 2-9 and nine against DiBiase. He's 28-72-1. There you go. Um, thanks, Mad Mike, for that. Yeah, Impact. Impact's been interesting uh, or not, depending on your opinion. Um, I don't know. It's been fine and watchable as far as my account is. Um, who else here is watching it? I know WrestleFan? Sorta. Sorta. I didn't really catch too much of this week, but, um, yeah, and, yeah, TNA's getting better. I mean, they're not going to be as, cause I, I watched it, I mix, I look more at their pay-per-views. Impact, it's going to be hit or miss, because it's a two-hour show that's building to their pay-per-view, you know, you're not going to get all the gr best stuff, you know, going out from that show. Uh, so I, I don't know. I'll give it, I'll give it a couple more weeks, I'll give it time, unless it makes a drastic change into something really horrible, then you know, then I'll change my opinion. But yeah, the the AJ stuff hasn't been hasn't been good, but it hasn't been good from the beginning. So mm -hmm. it's you know, there's not much to go up from. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Plumber, are you a TNA watcher? I actually purchased legally on my television through Garbage Comcast TNA Destination X for yeah. the first time ever. Uh, I haven't watched it since TNA Destination X, but I can tell you that was the best pay per view I've seen all year between either of the two uh, companies running right now. Definitely, I, I feel like we said the exact same thing last year. So, um, it, I, to me, they're staying the course. They're doing fine. There was a lot of excitement actually at the con of uh, people saying, "Oh, TNA is doing a show Saturday night down in Washington, PA, a baseball thing." I, I don't know how many times I heard that. Um, so, I mean, they're still, and everybody's, you know, going, go to the, go to the live show. Definitely. They're great shows. And, uh, I heard great things about it. Even the next day, uh, people that went to the show that came out to the con. Uh, so, so yeah, great. You know, um, so, uh, th there you go. There's your TNA report. Uh, what the TNA is report. TNA report. <laughs> what? I thought I had more stuff in the round table here. Now you know. Oh, hey. Well, let's just go with something. Let's just Take go something. No, actually, we do have a couple of things here. First of all, let's touch on this. Uh, uh, who posted this in the in the Facebook about the tent side? Uh oh. Uh, I don't no, know. I don't know who posted it, but I think I brought it up to some people. Um. I'll get it here so in a sec. Oh, it was wheels. It was wheels. Wheels. The yeah, okay. Um, Lord Tensai or Tensai, released his first tout, so he's getting into the social media stuff, uh, but it was actually taken down by WWE. Oh, because that's why this isn't playing. Taken down. I, I, think, I think there's a clip from YouTube or whatever, or if you go to like a site, I think there's some site that you can still watch it. Um, Tensai uh, was in uh, driving to uh, Indianapolis for SmackDown uh, with Sakamoto driving, and he made some comments about Japanese people being horrible oh, drivers, sure. and then Smack Tensai or Smack Sakamoto telling right, him to here open we go. his eyes. Here it telling is. Telling him to open his eyes. Here it is. Uh, it's actually on a YouTube thing. Uh, it's posted over on ProWrestling.net. Actually, oh, if we'll play, if I hit the button, that button. Driving to Indianapolis after a Monday Night Raw, beating up Tyson Kidd. I got my personal chauffeur here, Sakamoto. Very, very dangerous to drive with a Japanese person. <laughs> Open your eyes. <laughs> wow. And, and WWE probably wow. took that down from Tout. Wow, that's not a uh, so. So Tout is the tw new Twitter where wrestlers can be dicks. Um, in I have a safety message. <laughs> oh no! Oh, God. Asian people. Oh my God! Why? Why are you? <laughs> we're, 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 oh my god delete that delete that delete oh. that delete that delete that that's gonna be our show pick oh yeah but god. you can use it the show pick but edit my voice out <laughs> nobody can tell 
Nobody can tell. Trust me. Trust We're me. Never, oh, wow. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> I. Not to. Okay, so let's. <laughs> well, we had the tent side thing. No, no, let's just get one thing he looks straight. So happy. I'm clearly, I'm clearly mocking Tensai and not not at all representing my own views. This is a clear <laughs> mock of a man that is a racist, which I am not. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hat off. <laughs> fucking hat off. Come on. Hello. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Those mics look so mesmerized. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just, he looks so happy to be fake digital Asian. Like, I've never <laughs> seen a happier person in my life. I oh, go God. A <laughs> and that's all I ever wanted to be. Oh, now, you're seeing good. things now, and you're putting words in my mouth. And I, <laughs> you know what, Sorg? There's only one way to resolve this. The next time I'm on the show, I'm in the Mayhem Studios live, oh. sitting next to Chachi with my I hand can't. on his leg. That's the only way to do it. I give you three months to make it happen. Three months? Asian. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can I get rid of them? Let me shave real quick. Am I getting <laughs> laid? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Plumber loves you. Oh, All man. right, on that note. Um, they, but, but he's not but, the only one that was ha having a... Uh, had, WWE had to apologize for lately, right, WrestleFan? Yeah, there was um, AW, who we were starting sort of to get big fans of. Because, like, hey, no, we were Hey, oh, we're I pushing am. a tag team called the Primetime Players. Um, made a comment, because uh, he's doing a thing now uh, where he has a live mic, like sort of a mic oh. headset thing, uh, for during uh, his representative's matches. And Titus O'Neil was wrestling Kofi Kingston on Raw, and he made a joke that was kind of crossing the line. Uh, quote uh, something something to the degree of that uh, about the Kobe uh, that Titus O'Neil is just like Kobe Bryant in a Colorado hotel room. He's unstoppable. Oh, jeez. Yep, that's the thing that he said. <laughs> he totally said that. And Michael Cole, after the match, Michael Cole was like, yeah, we kind of apologize for the comments that were made by AEW. Live TV, ladies and gentlemen. We were on fire at the beginning of this show. Now we're making rape jokes. Oh. They don't know what's going to happen when we try to fill three hours on Raw. Oh, God. Oh, oh boo. <laughs> so uh, we may be saying goodbye to AW and Lord Tensai in the uh -oh. near future. <laughs> that's a that's a shame. That's a shame. I'm I really... just glad. I'm just glad that me making an ass out of myself in an attempt in a fail attempt to entertain all of you was a great segue to a racist segment. So that's great. I guess I could just take these off and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Your job is done. Go go and, go edit that questionable uh, footage. But yeah, I mean, do you think do you think they're going to reprimand you know in some way you know what's happened between these two <laughs> between these two people? I think it's unfortunate. No. I mean, it's just um, you know it, it's you know WWE. Unfortunately, it, it's a big corporation. They have a lot of people to answer to. So um, and, and when you like you've seen with Twitter, people's personalities come out. Now everybody has fifteen six seconds of video at a time to let their personalities come out. Some use it to great effect, like somebody like Derek Bateman or Chris Jericho or The Miz uh, that have been doing fantastic stuff on there. Uh, Antonio Cesaro uh, has been doing great stuff this week uh, on Tout. Uh, I, but then there's that... Uh, hey, remember what we were saying earlier about somebody on this show? If you come off like a dick, you're a dick. It doesn't matter who yeah. you are. And unfortunately, that means... You've been a dick in prob public now, and now that's that's cited and YouTubed, and it's not going away. And now, th there you go. There you go. You are what you eat. You are what you tell. That's what Whoa. it is. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, I don't know. What do you guys think, uh, LB? Uh, no, I don't think they're going to be punished at all. Okay. Okay, just apology and move on? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I think they're just going to let it go. Um, I think if it was somebody bigger like Randy Orton or, um, you know, just somebody bigger, I think there'd be a little more consequences. But now I think they're just going to say, fuck it. Hmm. So what do you think, Plumber? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think they will be. I don't think they should. I think it's just 
when, when you put this type of, of, of ability to connect with the public into somebody's hands and they don't have time to rehearse, like my uh, Disney notebook here, and you just kind of have to go with it, it shit happens. I, it, it's all about interpretation. I think you'd find something wrong with what everybody says at some point if mm -hmm. you dig hard enough. Yeah, definitely, right. definitely, definitely. Uh, Riz points out that they didn't punish Punk. What did Punk do? I don't know. Called out Chris Brown. Uh, well, the PC is overrated. Uh, they're they're overreacting. Oh, least, oh about, about the whole Twitter about the whole Twitter thing. Yeah. Oh. When Punk, oh, when what Punk went off on that fan on Twitter, yeah. That oh, uh, the, uh, like the kill yourself thing. That was kind of ridiculous. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you never know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, because I, I, I. I I would see because I know how Lunchbox said that if there was someone higher up, they may have done something. Mm -hmm. I think it's the other way around. I feel like you know they sort of I don't know because it's Punk or because it's Orton or whatever or, or because it was Cena because Cena had some backlash before mm -hmm. about comments mm -hmm. he's made. You know, like I don't know, maybe it'd be easier for them to say, "Yeah, go away." And, and it's weird because I I feel like like I get this general feeling with wrestlers like. Not just guys that have been in WWE, like guys, guys, like guys on the indies. Like I get this feel off some of them where I don't want to piss off somebody that can make me not work, you know? Um, yeah. Like, like, like I, I've seen people like pull punches on things because they don't want to, you know, piss off an indie promoter, promoter, like like an IWC, like or even a, you know something smaller like an RWA or PWX or 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 Prime or something like that. Like I I, I see that pullback of I don't want to, you know, hey, this is you know. I gotta watch my step here, you know, and especially something like this. It, 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 it's surprising, but it's not, you know. Um, but but then again, then we have things that are happening, like what are happening on the Indies, um, with Davy, well, Davy Richards, Kyle O'Reilly, and I think there was a third one, right? To uh, Tony Casino. Tony Casino. Okay. Okay. Casino. Was... Well, has been in IWC before, right? Am I mistaken? Are we on talking that? about this tonight? Because this is a good topic. I think. Yeah, this, um, for those that don't know, there was some stuff that apparently went over the weekend um, where there were reports that were coming out that um, Davy Richards and his... Because Davy Richards sort of travels around with Kyle Riley, Tony Kazina. They sort of train together and they're, you know, uh, more accustomed to traveling together. Um, there were some reports that they would skip out on shows and sort of take money from promoters and stuff like that without wrestling um, and sort of sort of jerk around promoters. Um, there was a report from a show in Iowa recently uh, where a promoter came out and basically said, and with some couple of side reports of how they showed up late to the event um, to the point where they had to say they weren't advertised. Um, and then they sort of were, had problems shuffling around the card, uh, which, which, which apparently they were disputing how the card should go. Um, and basically they wanted their money up front. He gave it to them and basically they skipped out. Uh, so they never, so they basically made out with, I think like $300. Um, and there has been side reports, uh, going to that, but also, um, Richards and Kazina haven't been as vocal, but Kyle O'Reilly has come out and made statements about how mm -hmm. there were issues with the promoter, how, the, how he doesn't, uh, he doesn't admit, uh, he doesn't disagree that he took the money. And then they took the money and left, but it was because of the fact that they weren't getting, you know, jerked around. Uh, O'Reilly uh, mentioned the fact that they were injured and, and that they wanted to make it an eight-man tag match so that they weren't, you know, as um, you know, weren't uh, being put their body as much on the line for this show. Um, and I think the promoter made. They say the promoter made a comment about how well it's Iowa. My lot of people know who you are here. Um, just and so they did. He admits to skipping out. Uh, Kyle, and there was also apparently an incident where Tony Kazina wrestled uh, 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 one of their wrestlers at the local. The, one of the local wrestlers that I believe was either sixteen or seventeen years of age, and sort of shot on him, and was very stiff and uh, uh, choked him out. So there's the controversy there, and just the and um, I think there's and there's been reports going around that there. Um, when people talking about it on Facebook and Twitter, they're using the hashtag Team Bandit mm -hmm. as this is sort of like a common thing for this group. 
Um, so I don't know. There's been conflicting reports. Uh, Kyle, in an update to that report, Kyle O'Reilly has come out with another statement saying he's looked at the situation now and he realized maybe they didn't do the right thing. Uh, and he is looking to get uh, back in touch with the promoter and possibly give him the money back. Um, so I don't, I don't know what's going on exactly with the situation. Um, but it's conflicting reports. Uh, there are some promoters that's, that will agree and say that they they do the similar type of stuff. But there are other promoters that say they arrive a couple minutes late, but they still work and they do a good job and they earn their money. So it's it's still very much up in the air. Yeah, and I know this has been brought up because, I mean, with the recent thing, luckily, uh, again, coming back to IWC, but uh, with, uh, I believe it was Kyle, Kyle O'Reilly and Davey Richards uh, uh, not sh- not arriving at uh, Super Indy. Um, you know, given, of course, that story, uh, for those who didn't hear when that happened before, uh, supposedly they called about 2.30 in the, that afternoon saying that they, they had a car troubles and uh, were broken down. But there was speculation that maybe something was a little fishy about that uh, <laughs> floating around. Uh, of course, uh, and I know this is this has sparked a huge conversation on IWC's even uh, Facebook group. So, um, yeah, I man, you know this this is like one of those things where I look at stories like this, and I think it's pretty irrefutable that it happened. I mean, Kyle Raya basically admitted it, right? Um, yeah. So, I mean, yep. this makes my first thought is like, well, why do I want to watch Ring of Honor now? You know, I, it's kind of my, my like my my first thought off of this is like, well, that kills any, you know, because these are guys that I enjoyed, you know, especially, you know, somebody like Davey Richards, you know, and and, and now it's like, well, you know, fuck that. So, but in sort of in sort of contrast to that, um, I believe Davey Richards is slowly like not working for Ring of Honor less and less now. And I believe yeah, he's, yeah. he's soon to be done with the company. Um, and I and it's and I agree with you because it does sort of look on to Ring of Honor. But at the same time, I don't, you know, it's horrible for them for Ring of Honor, you know, because you don't want their company to be looked on because of the the actions of these guys, you know, that exactly. aren't exclu- that aren't everything that Ring of Honor is, if that makes sense, you know. Um, and and I just found the story interesting, be- uh, also from the fact that we hear stories all the times, and I bet if you talk to a locker room of indie wrestlers, you hear a bunch of stories about promoters skipping town. You don't really and and cheating wrestlers out of money. You don't really see it the other way around, and I think that was the interesting thing from this story is that well, I ne- ne- never really heard of a wrestler sort of like taking advantage of promoters. Yeah, yeah, because usually it's the promoter. He holds the money. He he she holds the money. Holds the holds the uh, the, the power in the situation and doesn't make it poorly managed and and, and everybody gets screwed. But it's interesting. Uh, Plumber, what do you I think? think? Oh, go ahead. Uh, I, I think the bottom line is this. If I show up to work Monday and Tuesday, and, and, and I never met these guys, and I don't know them, and I, and I hate to, to speak about them not knowing them, but uh, I'm not in this business to make money. I'm in this business for fun, so here it goes. But if I show up to work Monday and Tuesday, and I have to stay until 8 or 9 o'clock at night, and I'm working 15 or 16-hour days, and yeah, that sucks. I don't want to be there till till 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. I have a pregnant wife here that I want to be with supporting her, helping her through all this, and, and making sure she's comfortable. But sometimes... If you commit to something, if you commit to a job, you have an obligation. So to, to hop on here and seeing guys, I may be speaking out of turn, but to see see these guys blogging about we had show on a, we had a show on a Friday, we had a show on a Saturday, and our back hurt going to Sunday. First of all, you have you're making a living off of a job that so many of us wish could be our living. How many of us want to sit inside of a cubicle? for 12 to 15 hours a day. No, I can guarantee you nobody does. So you're making a living off of that. And to say that now you're holding up the promoter to want to go from a singles match, which you originally planned for, to a eight-man tag or a six-man tag, that's not what the fans want to see. The six-man tag, the eight-man tag, it's you, a lot of times those are throwaway matches. Not always, but sometimes. And and to demand that and then to still show up when the promoter says, if that's what you can do, never mind. You know, if you want to do a six man, we want singles. Just don't come if that's what it is. To still show up, lie to him, take his money, and then we'll walk out the back door. I know I don't know the whole story. I know I don't know these guys, but I could tell you, in real life, if I would do something like that to my boss and to my company, 
I wouldn't be walking into work the next day, and I may not be walking into a professional company ever again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, exactly. And and and, and, to, and kind of go off what you saying, which I agree with completely. Um, and I, I'm sort of very sympathetic with wrestlers because I get that it's a sport where you get injured a lot, and that you you know you take you have to. But at the same time, as a professional wrestler, and I know not everyone's like jacked up and you know all that stuff, but as a professional wrestler. Not to sound like crude or, you know, disheartening or anything, but you should be able to take a bit of pain, you know, and be able to work through it. I, I don't know how serious this uh, injury was that they're talking about where they wanted to make it an eight-man tag so it would be easier on them. Um, but from the way it sounds, I mean, as a wrestler, as a, you know, that's your profession. And also from the fact that these guys have... Uh, not, not just that they're trained to be wrestlers, but they also have, you know, in, in other, like, mixed martial arts and stuff like that, they should be able to sort of work through this. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the one thing I have a problem with. And it's not me, and it's not me coming off as insensitive as saying, oh, you should work through this, you know. I, you know, I paid to see you. It's me being, you know, you're kind of a wrestler. You're a wrestler. As a wrestler, it should be part of your job to work through some of this pain. You know, yeah. And I don't. I don't. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't seen. know how much we should speak of the pain and everything because we, you know, none of us have been in the ring. You know, taking a lot of that except for you know a little bit for fun. You know. Um, so uh, hey, great points from uh, the chat room. There. John Fun saying uh, J Justin has one of the best legitimate points in quite a way. Here, the word professional is in the freaking name. Yeah, is a good point. Um, <laughs> and Serial Serial 2K says it's better to have a six man tag match than give uh, fans a crappy singles match if they're not 100 percent in health. They need to compromise. Um, the, so, the, so there's both sides to this, and, I, yeah, and it's yeah, not yeah. it's not as black and white, and it's no. not you know something that we could say oh it should have been this way or it should have been that way. The way that I maybe see it, and I don't know if I, like I said I wasn't backstage. I don't know anything about this other than what I've read. Um, you know, Kyle O'Reilly has come out and sort of apologized in a way. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying anything bad about Richards or Christina, uh, but they are the more experienced of the three. They have more time in the business. Kyle O'Reilly is still very young in his career. I feel like maybe he made sort of a young mistake mm -hmm. and sort of a rookie mistake in here and saying, oh, yeah, let's skip this. You know, and I think he's starting to understand that, well, maybe this wasn't the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and. and, and and, and to to a certain side point, just to play devil's advocate th th here, you know, remember, like, people in professional wrestling often are very conflicting personalities, okay? Just, it's kind of the nature of these are the people that do it. So it could have been just a matter of, uh, you know, whatever, whatever uh, you know, came from these team, team Ambition guys and back at the promoter, maybe something missed the mark there, you know? Maybe something got misinterpreted as being, okay, that's a dick move, or or got blown out of proportion one way or another uh and then it turns into something like this just to give a a, a positive potential i don't know positive spin on this you know and there's but, just you still don't you still don't walk out without doing anything and take money yeah uh, yeah i understand you know you could say maybe don't book yourself for three nights in a row if you don't think you can handle it and i know sometimes you maybe you don't know something goes wrong in one match and, and you're beat up and you can't do it but don't show up and take money. Oh, my God. It, most of these promotions barely make money in the first place. Yeah. And for somebody to show up and take $300 per, per guy, I mean, what are they charging fans to get into this thing? Somewhere right. between 10 and 25 bucks. So you're, you're crushing the promotion by just walking out. And, yeah, and, I and, and, I, I and there were reports saying that most of the money that was taken came out of the promoter's pocket. So that's sort of, you know, what what's that all about? And I think the best the best way they could have handled this, if there was that confliction, if there was that, you know, sort of they didn't see eye to eye, well, I'm going to work this show. I'm going to fulfill my obligations for this promoter, but I'm never going to work for this company again if it's going to end. You know, if it was that much of an issue, I would have done it, you know. Exactly, exactly. Fulfill your obligations and then afterwards walk out the door and say, fuck those guys. You know. yeah. They got the. They have the, the <clears throat> stage to bury that company, yeah. or they just you know the promoter tells them don't come, so they don't come, and then they're not there. I feel like whoever was right and whoever was wrong, and none of us were there, so none of us will know. But the bottom right. line is, what those guys ended up doing made them the bad guys by taking money and walking out. 
I mean, they're at, at that point they become thieves. At that point, they're wrong. No matter what happened before that, what happened after it, they took money to do something that they didn't do, and they walked out. They're wrong. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. All right. On that. Um, hold on. Let me see if there's anything else in here. I, was there any other news? Oh, hey. Um, Raw was on fire last night. <laughs> it was on fire. <laughs> on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So those apparently there was a they were saying it was a pyro uh, incident when they were testing the pyros for the night. Um, and, and noticed it was very dark on the sides of the screen all night long. <laughs> uh, it was, it looks like one of the LED screens, uh, on the side is what actually caught fire. Uh, they said it was before people came in, but there were fans, uh, supposedly there's reports of fans saying that they were actually in the building. I can't see them. No, doing yeah, it. Turned, uh, you're not going to do a pyro thing. Uh, I, I tuned in, mm -hmm. yeah. I tuned in late. Mm -hmm. And Michael Cole said that the people had to be escort, had to leave. Yeah. While they, had, they took care of it. They had to they, escort the building. Yeah. Yeah. It, like any of the staff or anything else that was in there. And if you see from the towel videos, I think it's pretty obvious that the, the arena was pretty much empty. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Jericho had the best towel video from it where he just like pointed at it. He heard the alarms going off and he just <laughs> he just sang fire. And it was it was tremendous. Go check that out. I just uh, I just have to say that the Mayhem Show has to have better tweets about Roth now on or at least more accurate. We landed a double letter softball game last night. I, I checked my phone. I got in my car. Raw's on fire. And I'm like, oh, my God, what I missed? <laughs> Punk went off. Something happened. I rushed home, yelling at my wife for not DVRing it. The poor girl, she's not feeling well. She's pregnant. And here I am yelling because she didn't DVR Raw. I found the set got on fire. And actually, there was zero or negative, even, storyline progression. So, Mayhem Show, I blame you for my marital problems right now. <laughs> Well, sorry we, about that. Hey. My goodness. Wrestling Mayhem Show, we, we sorry, destroy Justin. marriages. When Hey, you know, if we destroy your marriages, that makes up for the one that we created that's happening in a couple months. So, But we'll, we'll yes. talk about that a little later. Um, all right, on that note. Oh, hey, oh yeah, the Insane Clown Posse also did a song entitled Chris Benoit that was released, uh, I believe, this week. I didn't listen to the entire thing. I'm an ICP I, I, fan. I have not liked a lot of their stuff in the last several years, uh, though I do. I, I still enjoy the ICP stuff, um, but I sound like such a non-fan when I say it that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I want to listen to the rest of it and reserve my judgment until then. Um, but, yeah, it, if you did something interesting with it, great. But otherwise, yeah. no, you if, just... If I, I watched the full video, and I'm and I, 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 I'm not a huge ICP fan, you know. No, just no. putting that out there. I know it's shocking, um, but I listened to it, and I feel like I should be offended, but <laughs> I really, I really am not. Are you offended because... as a person because of what happened, or as a wrestling no. fan? Is yeah, my well, question. It's not even that. I mean, it's the you know the song is called Chris Benoit. They were the if you listen to the lyrics, they just said Chris Benoit a couple times in like the the whatever the verse or whatever, and they were in a wrestling ring. Okay, but every it, it, it like I guess you could relate the lyrics in the Benoit, but it was like there was no like direct reference to uh, except saying that he, they're the Crippler or whatever. Like, but it's like okay, you're using wrestling terms and you're in a wrestling ring. I feel like I should yeah, be offended. Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's the sense. I feel like I should be offended, but it really wasn't that offensive. It, was, it wasn't good enough to offend you. Um, yeah, I, we'll, we'll take a look at it. the things I heard. It, it wasn't very good from from friends of mine that are still avid uh, listeners to to their stuff. And that was a shame. I was looking to, forward to the new album, and this is what they put out from it. Mm. Um, all right, and uh, anything else we want to touch base on before we get out here, guys? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, thank you. All right, time to learn. <laughs> what did you learn from wrestling this week? Let's go with Wake Up Chachi. I'm awake. Hi. Sorry. What'd you learn, <laughs> what'd you learn from wrestling? Raw was on fire. <laughs> okay, thank you. DJ Lunchbox, <laughs> what'd you learn? Uh, I learned that they took a, a potentially very interesting... Uh, well acted character in uh, AJ and just kind of made her a boring GM heel. I was a little disappointed. All right, the wrestle fan, what did you learn? 
from wrestling? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week. This goes back to Raw. We were worried that with you know them moving to three hours, it was going to be a bit convoluted. <laughs> um, and it's starting to show because this week, uh, you know, last Monday we had the whole Triple H Brock Lesnar blow off thing uh, with Heyman and all that. It was really cool. Triple H and Lesnar, Heyman, Stephanie, not on the show this week at all. They showed the but they showed the three minute recap of what happened the week before on Raw, not once but twice. The full video. If that's not them buying time for having three mm. hours, I don't know what is. What is you know, they kinda do it on um on SmackDown as well though. Like I'll get they'll do their raw rebound and it's in, it's the entire segment for like ten minutes. Yeah, but when it's the next week of Raw and you're telling me what happened last week on Raw twice? Really? <laughs> like, seriously? One time, I get I get it. Yes, I don't want to watch the video, but I get it. You're recapping for people that I didn't watch. But twice? Are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. And we'll see how, how much that wears. I, I don't even like the little recaps they get. It's like, I just saw this an hour ago. That doesn't seem like such a long time for me. All right, Justin Plummer, TV superstar. TV last... superstar, tomorrow night, 10 o'clock p.m., I, Justin I, Plummer I... from the IWC. Shane Taylor from your favorite, RWA. We're going to debut on the Sci-Fi Channel. Check it out. But... I don't know what to expect, but it's going to be entertaining. i got to agree with Raw. I can't believe that they could go two hours without progressing any storylines. Now to say they can go three, it's pretty incredible. It's a definite feat. Uh Real quick, we didn't Matt. But we didn't mention I, I just, Matt HD Cannon. I, I we have to mention that guy. I, I was just going to ask what you learned from wrestling this week. <laughs> That's what I'm learning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Matt HD Cannon was another one of the guys at he the was. IWC's he was. Uh, youngster show. Did a great job. And finally, Chachi, a uh -huh. zombie finger puppet, as my witness. I give you three months to get ready. Because I guarantee you I will get a petition that is so strong that I will be sitting on that couch next to you with this right hand. No, 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 no. This left hand on your knee. And we will be talking, we will be talking wrestling, looking <laughs> eye to eye. Justin Plummer wants to come to the Mayhem Studios, and there's nothing that's going to stop me. I'll go to any heights. Chachi, I'm coming for you. I'll be here. He's not going anywhere. All nope. right, from the chat room, Hot Wheels learned that Jericho is touting gold. Zero Two K learned that CM Punk agrees with me that lawyers Lawler sucks. Uh, Bobby F J Town learned that the Melina is getting a snack. You leave her the fuck alone, aka that bitch snubbed me. I was going to leave her alone. <laughs> also, Jericho is the best at tout. <laughs> Riz learned that Virgil is a fucking dick. Uh, John learned that. Oh, oh, no, he liked the song, and the video was uh, cool looking. Again, I'll look at the rest of it and, uh, and reserve my official opinion until then. Um, and uh, John Fun learned that wasn't a heel turn. What? Oh, yes. Um, me, I, I learned, um, give new guys a chance, man. Um, man. Really enjoyed the Proving Grounds. Again, uh, you know, not much going into it. A lot of new faces there. It was great to see that. Um, so go check out what's everything on there. Uh, I'm just running stuff together because it's really late. <laughs> In my mouth. Uh, IWCWrestling.com. Plumber really loves you. In your mouth. Maybe an aftershock will be up this week if it gets approved, if it gets by a The raciest edition of aftershock. It yet. is so evil. It's so evil. It's not going to make the airwave. But take my word for it. It was good. It's the internet. It's pure anyways. It's the internet. We'll have, a, we'll have a red band version of it, right? Maybe we'll just... Mayhem show. I will give the Mayhem show the unedited footage. Maybe, maybe. Oh, well, okay, I was going to say maybe we put it exclusively on the DVD, but uh, that works too. Whatever All right, I with do, that, whatever guys. Whatever I got to do to get next to Chachi, that's what I will do. And you mark my words, look into these eyes. Chachi, I see you. I see you sitting there. I'm coming for you. I'll, I'll warm up the knee for you. I'll lotion it. I'll make it nice and smooth for you. There no you lotion, go. I'm allergic. All right, allergic. no lotion. <laughs> I don't know what's going to be better, this or the redneck last week. All right, Chachi is at insertcoinbegin.com. DJ Lunchbox at thoughtfulriot.com. Maker of and poems. And DJ Lunchbox on tout. 
Yes! WrestleFan is at the WrestleFan. Justin Plummer, well, he's going to be on Sci-Fi. We've had enough of that. Um, and <laughs> I'm at Sorgatron.com. Check us out, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Join us live Tuesdays around about 8.30 p.m. Eastern or so. Uh, you can join us in the chat room and everything. We're on iTunes, Roku, uh, Blip TV, Stitcher app, video, audio, however you want to take us. However you want to take your Mayhem pill. Send us an email to... Good time. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412-206-WMS0. That's the hotline. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. We're on Facebook. We're on your Google+. Plus. And uh, buy the app, Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, on your iOS app store or Amazon app store as well. This is Sorg for the people, for the chat room. Mayhem out! Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.